Hello everyone, it's me Anne from Anne Makes. Welcome into the studio. I hope everyone is doing well. We are well here. Everybody is fine. Everything's fine. Uh, today I wanted to come on and do a really quick video. As you may know, that's all I'm able to do uh, lately is some really short videos. We have had so many issues here with uh, technology. I have been making a lot of stuff in my studio. I haven't been making videos, but I have been applying a lot. And one of the things I've been doing is trying to use up my supplies, using up my stash, and also adding to my stash by creating uh, embellishments that I make out of all the supplies that I have. So, I showed you a couple weeks ago how I was recycling some old CDs into art tiles and that was a lot of fun and it was a very addictive process and I'll leave a link for that video up in the corner or in the description. Today I want to show you how I've been using up buttons from my stash. Yes, buttons because I have an extensive collection of buttons. If you want to know uh, how many buttons I have, I don't know, I've never counted them, but if you want a glimpse into how just how many I have, I do have some older videos of me showing you my first craft room in this house, which was in my basement, and it was quite an extensive tour. <laughs> and I did have, I did show off my big button collection, so you could see that there. So anyway, what I've done, is I wanted to make some typewriter keys, vintage typewriter keys. Now, I had looked up on various websites, including Amazon, to see if I could purchase these little embellishments to add to my own mixed media, or even if I wanted to make jewelry out of them. But I found that they were very expensive for what they are. So, uh, after I, I, after that, I decided, you know what, I'm going to take a look at my very own vintage typewriter, and I, I'm going to try to insert a picture of it here, but it is incredibly dusty, and it's in a dark corner of my basement right now, so... <laughs> But I do have an actual vintage Underwood typewriter with real vintage typewriter keys. So I looked at the keys and I compared the sizes and I said, hmm, I can do, I can do this. I can make keys. So I looked up for videos on YouTube. I came across uh, a few different ways of making faux vintage typewriter keys uh, and they involved clay and I didn't I didn't like the clay thing I wanted something easy and so all in all here is what I did to make my very own faux vintage typewriter keys this is what they look like I made a ton of them because I have a ton of buttons and by the way I still have a ton of buttons <laughs> so uh, yeah anybody have ideas for embellishments crafts or art I can make with buttons send it my way uh, so this is what they look like I love how they turned out they look really old really uh, like vintage, even a little rusty on some of them, and I just love to look at these. These look like some embellishments we would buy uh, in a craft store that would be from a certain designer, and they uh, would be priced, especially here in Canada. Things like that are pricey, I find. So uh, I made these literally for pennies. And I wanted to share that with you in case you're into making your very own vintage embellishments for very little money, as I am, or as I did. So first things I want to share with you is the images I got to make the buttons came from this very generous uh, YouTuber blogger. I will have the link for you in the description below 
where she has uploaded this printable PDF of actual vintage typewriter keys. And on this PDF, she has included uh, typewriter keys with the rings around them, which would be like what the actual keys look like. And also just the letters and numbers and symbols from a vintage typewriter. So this is very easy to just uh, download from the internet and print out on a regular printer, which is what I did. I printed this on just regular paper, copy paper, printer paper that you buy at Staples and all other major stores. I printed this out with my printer. I have a very, I have a brand new printer actually. It's a Canon, my printer is a Canon TS3320. I paid $30 for it at Walmart. It was a super deal that they were having. And I bought it because it was cheaper than trying to repair or replace parts of my other printer because my other printer decided all of a sudden not to print anymore. <laughs> and I tried to overhaul it. I took it apart. I cleaned it and everything. It worked for a little while and then it decided not to print again. So I had to go to Walmart. I had a grocery pickup to do um, and uh, there were some items that I couldn't pick up in the grocery pickup item because they weren't grocery items for whatever reason. So I actually had to go into the store, uh, but I was lucky because it was really early in the morning. They let in very few people at a time. And I think I was one of five people, five customers in the store that morning. And I went to into the store and I was able to go pick up a few I the few items I couldn't get in my grocery pick um curbside pickup and uh as I walked through the store I saw a display of printers <laughs> that were on like clearance and that's how I got my uh my new Canon for 30 bucks and I'm very happy about that. So here's the printout. And so that's what you will need. You will also need buttons. And I there's a short video showing you exactly how I put these together. And that's coming up. But uh, to make this, you need uh, this printout, which is available for free. Some buttons. And perhaps something to cut the circles or cut the keys. I used a little paper punch that is a half inch punch. That is what I have. Um, I also have another punch that's slightly bigger than a half inch, which does a more accurate job of cutting the whole circle. But when I went through my button stash, I found these buttons and the little in, the little half inch circles fit perfectly. So that's what I used. So if you have a paper punch that you can cut the circles out perfectly to match your buttons or vice versa, whatever, uh, then you can use that. You can also use just regular scissors and cut out the circles. So the other thing I used to adhere and to make the like glossy type of cover on the faux typewriter key was to use some Mod Podge or the other thing I use. I was using up supplies that I have in my stash and this is true this is truly what I did use. I had this bottle of Mod Podge gloss it is so old. It was only two thirty nine. It's from Ben Franklin in uh, Vermont. So I that means that this bottle. I don't want to say how old it is, but needless to say, I bought this before I had kids. <laughs> and when I found this bottle in my supplies, it was about three quarters full, and the the clear glossy Mod Podge was actually very yellow. <laughs> and hard and I thought oh this has to be thrown out 
but I said, ah, let's try something. I put it in the microwave for about uh, six seconds, and I have a very powerful microwave, by the way. And the Mod Podge came out of here like new. It reconstituted or melted them, whatever it, the microwave did, saved my Mod Podge. So I was able to use this, but I also wanted dimension. So I also had the glossy accents. Now the glossy accents is like a dimensional glossy modgy podgy. So, but this bottle also was old, was all hard. Guess what? I put it in the microwave. Same thing as my old Mod Podge and the microwave saved my glossy accents. Now mind you, both of these came out quite goopy and thick, um, but it was perfect, just perfect for this project. Now, I also, when, when it got too hard to use this because it was quite goopy and sticky and, and all that, and then I ran out, period, I turned to a new product <laughs> and uh, I use the Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. I have this in my stash, but I just tried to finish up my other crap that I had. So this, I love, love, love using Mod Podge Dimensional Magic since uh, I have a relationship with Plaid. Of course, I will promote this product over the other other product but seriously they do the same thing so i've seen mod podge dimensional magic on amazon i've bought uh bottles of this from michael's online so i've also seen this product online and uh, michael's and amazon so these are readily available so that is my tip for today. If you come across some old supplies that you think are too far gone, they might not be. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the little video. It's really simple to make these, uh, in the, as you'll see in the video. And here we go. So I hope you get the gist of how to make these faux vintage typewriter keys. Uh, I had a blast making them. It was very addictive. I think I made, uh, I actually printed two copies of this sheet and I made, yeah, I made the, I made this set of typewriter keys four times basically because that's how many buttons I had. And then when I was done, I just put them into this little box. And this is actually recycled. I had bought, I believe there were nails in here from the dollar store, something like that. And I had just kept the box. And I just, I know it has dividers, but I don't care. I don't care about the dividers. 
I just dumped all my little buttons in here and it filled up my box and now it stores nicely on my shelf with my other lettered embellishments. So, oh, and my final tip of the day is when I find something for free that I can download and print out, I always keep a master copy in my binder of collage items and that way if I ever lose the link or don't remember the link, I have the link here to go to it directly and also I can just make a photocopy of this if for some reason that day I have no internet. <laughs> So I hope you liked this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Please like, comment, share. And stay well, everybody. And until next time, stay crafty. Thank you for watching. Bye.